Thank you so much, Lisa. You can check her out later today where she'll be diving a little bit deeper into investors and value creators and capturing value. Um, so I hope you'll join us for that conversation. Next up is a man who has an uncanny knack for being ahead of the curve, but is unique in his ability to help companies and industries make sense of how to navigate the road ahead. Please join me in welcoming Crowd Companies founder, Jeremiah Oyang. Thank you. <clears throat> Hey everybody, how you doing? <laughs> Who's from Kansas? I am. Yeah. In fact, we hosted with peers the Resilience Summit in Kansas City, so uh, lots of love to, to Kansas. So thank you. I wanted to take on a tough job. I wanted to work with the generals, as Lisa pointed out. And uh, oh, let's move this forward. Ooh. Yeah, it's not clicking. OK, great. So I'm here to give a different perspective on the peer-to-peer -peer and help us rethink, reimagine, in a world where not just peers are sharing, but also when large corporations, the generals, are part of this movement. I'm the founder of Crowd Companies. We're an association that works with the Fortune 500, the largest brands in the world. And we're trying to teach them, show them, how to share and how to make with us, the people. All right, let's take a look forward. I'm struggling with the, the clicker here. Maybe you can click for me. All right, the collaborative economy. I'll tell you when to click, we'll be fine. The collaborative economy, let's click forward. Is it really peer-to-peer? -peer? Um, and, and the question is, if this is truly peer-to-peer, -peer, how will we sustain for the long, long term? Let's use this image right here. This is a honeycomb, and in nature, Honeycombs are one of the most resilient structures that can withstand a great deal of weight, and they're also very efficient. There's no waste, there's no gaps. Every little tiny piece is used. And in a honeycomb, lots of people can use and access and activate and collaborate the resources right in the honeycomb. It's a powerful structure. Let's move forward. But how do we unlock how we can all work together in this honeycomb? And, and one of the wonderful things that this organization has done is printed out this honeycomb. I'm going to walk, walk through it in today's presentation. There's 200 copies down on the desk, which you can take. Now, this is an incomplete image. Uh, it doesn't have all of the components in our economy, but it has some of the key elements. Moving forward, I'd like to thank a number of folks who contributed such as Neil Gornflow, Lisa Gansky, Mike Walsh, Shervin, who's about to join me on stage, and a number of other folks, including Dr. Alexander Samuel, who's here in the audience. Now, in the center of our economy, it's about the people. And one of the challenging, that's right, let's hear woo, the people. <clears throat> now, one of the interesting things in the council that we try to do with executives from the largest corporations is they cannot use the word consumer. That's right. I don't let corporate executives say consumer in the council. Instead, they have to come up with other words. Empowered people, makers, crowdfunders, hosts, partners, people, humans. So we're reframing the way we're thinking about this because the crowd, us, the community, are becoming very empowered on our own right. Moving forward, here's six different verticals which we're seeing in this new space. And I'll walk through each of them and give us examples. <clears throat> I'll show examples of how people are using goods, then I'll also show how corporations are also part of this space. Let's take a look at the first one, goods. Now, there's a couple of things happening here. There's used goods, which can be shared in marketplaces like Yertle. We're also seeing rental models emerge, like Play. I use Play, rent Legos uh, for my daughter. And we're even seeing custom-made goods from the maker movement. Let's show two examples. The first example, of course, uh, moving forward, is Yertle. And Yertle allows anybody to share aluminum siding or anything from, that's unused in your house. But now we're also seeing corporations learning how to share products. Let's move forward. For example, Patagonia encourages their own customers to buy and sell their own used goods. Now, why would you do that? Well, there's three reasons why a company would do that. One is it shows that they are committed to their mission on sustainability. Two, it shows that they have durable goods. And three, it in indicates they have a thriving community around their brand. See, corporations, companies, they're learning how to share goods too. Let's move forward to the next one. 
What about food? Are there any food startups here or working on food sharing? I met a few. All right. So we're seeing a lot of things on shared food or even shared food prep. Let's take a look at an example. You might know Feastly, where people's homes are becoming restaurants. Now, we don't see any corporations in this space, but let's look at the next example. We're seeing companies like Walgreens partner with the crowd to deliver consumable items like pharmaceutical goods. So we're seeing corporations partner with the crowd to extend the promise of the brand, delivering things that people need when they're sick. Let's take a look at the next example. Next is services. And we see two kinds. There's personal services. There's business services. Let's take a look at some examples. Instacart, deliveries gro groceries when you need it. Fantastic peer-to-peer -peer model. Let's take a look at how companies are now part of this. You may not have heard of this example. It's relatively new. Coca-Cola is now encouraging their own customers to be like employees and help participate in the experience. Work Now Locally is a new app that Coke has launched. And when you, have an, when you have idle time and you might be going shopping, you might be going to Home Depot, and you can open your phone and see if there's any tasks for you to do. After you do this, you can do this task and you can see, are there any shelves that have Coke products that need to be stocked or refaced? In this model, customers and employees start to look the same. They're redefining exactly the new relationship. Coke has entered the space and is learning how to share services. Let's take a look at the next one. All right, moving around, transportation. We see car sharing, we see ride sharing, and there's other variants emerging. One example that you might be familiar with moving forward, of course, is Lyft. But the corporate example on the next slide, we're seeing a number of them. <clears throat> Certainly Ford has provided discounts to Uber drivers. We're seeing that uh, BMW has Drive Now, and there's a lot right across the street. Be sure to check that out. But one example that stands above all the others is Peugeot's Mew program. And in the Mew program, it's actually a membership program where you have access, as Lisa Gansky always talks about, versus ownership over cars, car share, bicycle scooters, and even buses, things they don't even make. A big brand is learning how to do access over ownership so we can focus on what's important to us, getting to our destination, being efficient with resources. Let's move forward. All right, and here we have another example here. This is space. There's personal space and business space. Let's take a look at the example we might know, Airbnb, including tree houses for rent. And now we're seeing that corporations are also learning how to share space on the next example. Marriott launched a co-working spot in Seattle, Redmond, and also in Chicago called WorkSpring. And they're experimenting how people want access over ownership of a business space. They've redefined their lobbies into something different. Looks like an office space. It's a co-working spot, uses hip furniture. Hotels are learning how to share things beyond their beds, but also just their front lobbies in a different way. So let's move to the last example, money. We see peer-to-peer -peer lending. We see crowdfunding. And we're even seeing new forms of cryptocurrency. People are creating their own currencies to get what they need from each other. Let's take a look at some examples. Has anybody funded anything on Kickstarter? A few people. And what is amazing is the Pebble Watch, funded and built by the crowd, beat Samsung and Apple to the market. Just think about that for a second. The crowd beat Apple to the market for a new digital watch. And we're seeing companies. This one will blow you away. Let's move to the last example. Even corporations like U-Haul are getting into crowdfunding. And they're enabling the crowd to fund different parts of the trucks or the trucks. And you get a dividend. Now, why would a company, a corporation, tap the crowd for crowdfunding? Well, a couple of reasons. One is they can set the terms that might be lower, and you bypass the bank. People and the corporation are working directly, more efficient. Number two, crowdfunding is the highest form of loyalty because you have shared destiny with those people who invested in your products. OK, moving forward. At the very top, you can see how crowdfunding and custom goods are related. That's why they're strategically positioned in this document. The maker movement is part of this collaborative economy. There's many pieces to it. But the, the overall trend here is that people are getting what they need from each other. Let's go forward. 
Has anybody read a, a recent report that I published with Dr. Alex, raise your hand, uh, called Sharing is the New Buying? OK, a few hands. We sampled 90,000 people, general population, 18 and over, and she's going to talk about it in her panel, on how they share. And you can see the behaviors here. And we listed out all of them except for the food aspect. And we found out that uh, aside from goods sharing, which is dominant in eBay and Craigslist, the rise of this market, the sharing economy, collaborative economy, is around single digit adoption. We're at the very start, as Lisa talked about, the first innings of this space. And we asked them, how will you use these in the next 12 months? And we found out that the adoption rate is going to double. It's rare that we see such amazing growth. Let's look at the next slide. I charted the frequency of how companies are learning how to share. And this is the adoption rate by frequency by month. And you can see a startling uptick up and to the right. Companies also want to share and are doing it. Let's move forward. So I'd like to offer a definition that is probably not one that everyone will agree on, but I'm open to the dialogue. Let's click forward. The collaborative economy is a new economic model where creation, ownership, and access are shared between people and corporations. It's a new type of partnership that we haven't seen before. Let's move forward. If you like these slides, you can find them on my blog. I just put them up. And to close things out with uh, some final five points, let me summarize. Moving forward. Number one, the core of the sharing or the collaborative economy is always about people. Number two, but to make it sustain, and we'll hear about this throughout the conference, we have to engage governments and regulators and corporations too. Number three, corporations need to change significantly. They must build products that can be shared and are designed to last, not built for obsolescence. Number four, it means they also have to embrace the marketplaces of used goods and services and people in our time as well. And then lastly, crowds and companies can work together for new business value. Uh, a new type of relationship is starting to come aboard. Let's click forward. Thank you so much. I wanted to tackle a, a tough project to work with the generals. Uh, thank you for supporting and listening to me. Uh, I'm Jeremiah. Thanks. Thanks.